let me share let me start with the curriculum that we okay. will be going to discuss throughout the training and which one is more relevant to your work of course we will talk about each and everything it's not like we are going to skip anything mm -hmm. but yes there are few things that you should focus focus more because your your role demands that other things if you don't even practice that's still fine like you have to understand the entire introduction of the elements which you will do how the user work how the, you know inside the sheet how it will work point introduction everything so these are the terminology that i'll explain you later mm -hmm. then we will see how to manage the learning as the name says that uh, you will have to create lots of items you know learning learning items schedule training classes you know agenda everything you have to define in the system now all these are somewhere interconnected if i create a schedule offering it will be created to uh, it will be connected to item somewhere the request will be there enrollment status everything is somewhere entangled with each other okay okay we will see then we go to role and security which is very important wherein you will show that who can do what i can go into the system i can also visit the lms learning portal but as a normal user i should not have access to create or delete anything right but as a as an ad, admin you should have all the access and if there are no as a hris admin you should have actually all the access to create maintain and do everything from the back end how does system differentiate you will need it a lot because i'm sure wherever you're working there are not only teams divided based on rules but geography as well <laughs> sorry but right region based on region they are also divided if your company is uh, live in different countries then of course the region uh, you know geographical area their role vp everything will segregate each and every data okay okay then we will have our curriculum management how you actually define your curriculum what all you are going to learn in this session you you created a learning session for let's say uh, sap module any one of the module what all you are going to learn in this curriculum how much time will it take who are your trainers what are the times what are the links that you will be using to enroll yourself yeah criteria everything will be there <laughs> sorry then content management how you write a content for that then we have some scope this is typically technical part very technical uh, mm -hmm. mostly you know most of the sap guys does that but we will also see that at least we will have some glimpse so that when you go and uh, manage the entire process and you let's say let's say you have some consultants coming over to your organization to actually implement it or set up your thing you know the basics so that yes. they can't fool you that okay this <laughs> yeah if they it happens yep. i mean i'll be honest with you uh, they will say this can't be done this can be done but if you don't know the detail at least you know the basics so that you can talk with them okay both this is what i need and this mm -hmm. is what i know that can be done right then yep. system administration the entire data configuration general settings we are already covering it how to set up the notification and how how to trigger that to different different users there will be a commercial part which you won't use that much as an admin but as a process manager or maybe you know hr learning management you yeah. will be using it that how much a particular uh, training will cost how much budget should be allocated to this particular team things like that oh, i like and this and yeah because of course budgeting things you have to keep in mind then we will have our module 10 which is evaluation of service which is very important these days we are working on poll tracks to get the you know surveys i mean uh, the feedback but evaluation in lms can be done through different different survey i want to set up a survey so the moment you completed your training you can give your feedback and we see how useful that was yeah. we will set up that survey Okay, great. This is this was one of the areas I was looking into it because some of them they're still using Survey Monkey, but I was thinking since the LMS has this function, we should make use of it. Yeah, of course, and yes. this is good. I won't say the best one in the uh, market, but at least good. 
because if you go into the market, you will see in cloud market, after Cornerstone, SAP Learning is one of the best providers, oh, best features they have. Have you worked on Cornerstone? So, um, no, no, I have not worked on Cornerstone before. It's a very good tool as well. But oh. yeah, SAP Learning Hub, because a learning management is very good, reason being, other all modules can be integrated with it, especially employee central. So that's what I was thinking. When I have this restored, this SAP uh, access, I get it from uh, the support team. I will actually start from employee center. Okay. Not in detail, but I'll show you the backend, how actually employee data is created, uh, how this is going to be integrated with LMS. Oh, that's good. How you, yeah. So you know, right? Let's say uh, you're using employee central. Your data is created in employee central because that Sorry. is the market. How does system know in LMS that, okay, this person, because these are two different system altogether. LMS is not something that is on SAP's platform right now. Mm -hmm. So how you integrate it? So you will get to know a little about the integration as well. Also, how these systems are, you know, fetching details from one, one another. Okay. So can I ask, so which means this, the employees central, so if once our information are inside, actually part of it will be, take for example, the payroll, the department, all this information should tie in into the LMS also, right? So which means when I do a report, all this information could be auto-generated so I can do billings or so-called cross-charge to other departments. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that first first of all, yeah, first of all, what you have to do, you have to, of course, integrate it that I create someone in employee center, their data is fetched in the LMS all automatically. I complete a training in LMS that is already up, also updated in employee center that this person has completed this training. Oh, cool. Right. Okay, great. Yeah. So that one person should not be repeating any particular training again and again. Mm -hmm. Makes right? sense. Yeah, correct. This is we'll do on. that. All. We'll do that. All. Don't worry. Now, to start with, I'm going to share some of your documents after this class with support team. They will forward it to you. Okay. How this will look like? I will mark everything in that email. And I'll ask them to extend, share it with you. For next two days, what I mean today and tomorrow, what you have to go through in the system. Because that is what we're going to see in the system on Wednesday, once we have the system restored. Okay. Yes. Yeah? But before that, I'll give you a little glimpse of the system, how the backend looks like. This is LMS. When we want to set up the classes, what all topics do we need to cover in this? We need to cover the classes, how to create it. When you set up a class, you need to provide a time slot. When will that class will be held, right? Mm -hmm. For that, you have to create a registration tool, a registration path how to register for it. If in the future I want to do repetitive classes, how would I do that? I can copy that class. How would I see the history and recording of the learning? And how to do the class management in extra. All these things are a small part, I would say everything, small part of these classes training. So when we talk about classes, we will cover each and everything. Now, in the back end, you will see there are some terminology that we will be using again and again. I, what I did, I took these terminologies for you. I will share these documents at the end with you so that you can keep it for your reference. Like, what are classes? These are nothing but an item that has been scheduled and placed on the training calendar with a start and end date. Start date and start time, sorry. You're getting me, right? What are classes? If somebody asks you, why I'm showing you this? Because if you want to go for the certification, these there can be some questions like that. Oh, okay. Oh, so if I attend this class, I can go for certification. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you how to do that. No worry. I'll share some some questionnaires with you at the end so that you can keep it for your reference. And if you want, you can practice and go for the certification. Mm -hmm. Now, what are resource blocks? Where do you get all the resources? Time slow resources. See, there is this resource block and there is a resource. So these are different. Oh. Yeah. Then cohort, what is that? 
a group of user who are tracked as a group and perhaps complete a series of scheduled training requirements. So I said, okay, there is a team, uh, SAP team, I can say in HR, they have to have that training on SAP because we are going live with SAP. So those are those people we can be called as cohort. Okay, got it. Instructor, facilities, location, equipment, material. Why I'm showing this? Because you will be using this again and again, repetitively, all the time. So you should be very aware and clear about these terminologies. Okay. Yeah. Then, as I said, and then don't worry about it. We are just looking at it. When we do in the system, everything we will redo every, with example. I'm just showing you this part. In learning a role, what all rules we will be covering in LMS, we will have a learning role, learner role. So mm -hmm. as a normal user, I am I'm assigned with a training. So I am will I'll be called as learner. I have to go and complete that training. Okay. Then okay. external learners, like let's say you are a training institute, or maybe your company has a tie-up with somebody else. And you're doing this training, uh, you know, collectively. So those people who are coming from outside, they will be called as external learner. Got it. Okay. Okay. Maybe you have vendors. We you have you know, uh, concurrent employment. Uh, sorry, uh, these uh, contract workers. They you don't get their employee IDs. You don't create their employee IDs. What would you do? Uh, you just provide them training so that they can work on your system. Then okay. you will have a manager's role. Then you will have an instructor role, the, who is the trainer. And in this UE, you will be this person, I think, going forward. You will be center of excellence for this learning. Mm -hmm. So True. practice True. learning need, yeah? And will approach all these things, how they do it. Then curriculum owner, I, I want to give you a trainer training on a learning and management. So I am the owner of this entire curriculum. What all I'm going to show you, mm -hmm. just like that. A training SME, somebody who's very good with the system. You will be that once you learn about LMS. Probably you will be going and giving trainings to different different people because you are the subject matter expert. All right. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, HRSs is nothing but shared service. And sure, you must be using, your company must be using it. The mm -hmm. shared services thing who will be working on daily tickets. That if somebody has any issue, they will look into it. The first layer of the Ticketing tool, load new content and create new items, platform COE, vendors, and procurement. All these rules will be there or will have some access, uh, action to do when you learn and work on learning management. Yeah? Yep. And then again, key terminologies employee, user, manager, instructor. What is this? Mostly from admin side, these are the users you will be using when i say employee or user it includes everyone who is going for that training i can be manager but i might also have to complete some trainings mm -hmm. right so i am the user or employee right now it doesn't matter what my rule is i am the learner right now then i will i am a manager i will assign some trainings to my uh, team direct team that okay we are working on SAP now. You guys have to learn about SAP. So this is something as a manager I'm assigning to my team. Mm, I can do okay. that. As an instructor, what all I can do, right? What all I will have access to, what all I can show you in the system. And then comes the admin. Okay, you will that's my role. Yeah, I think that's my, my role is as admin, yeah. Uh, but once you start with admin, you should actually know about all of them because you will be helping them with the system. Okay. But okay, manager says, okay, I see Jenny, I can I can't uh, access this training, I can't this uh, you access this particular URL. So as an admin, you will go and see why this is not available for manager's role, and then of course you will do all the you know rest things that are needed. Okay. Then again, we will have the entire list of this. What I'll do, of course, after this class, I'll share this document with you so that you can just have a look so that you have a fair idea that when we talk, when I say tomorrow that content object, what does that mean? You, all okay. you have to do is just follow the instruction in okay. the system, right? 
in the exercise you will be assigned resource to time slot oh. click on learning activities so when you log into your system there will be an option for learning activities yes system says click on it you click on it then you will it says click on classes there will be a lot of options. can you see under learning activities yes classes then enter the date the data everything so step by step all the screenshots are there you can keep it for your reference and also you can keep on practicing on it so the moment we complete our class and you do this uh, assignment you will be able to complete one part which is called it as add time slots in class how to add time slots in class mm -hmm. okay can i just right. it's okay All right yeah go ahead right yeah. So because I saw the part of add instructor, so there is also a part that we can delete instructor. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, but if I oh, but is interlink the will there be an interlink example if I delete an instructor now in the in the so called in the production, will it affect the rest of the items that's been created or classes being created? Will it affect the, those that's been Oh, yeah, of course, there will be a repercussion for everything. Whenever you delete, like I have a training, oh. I complete it, oh. and you go all of a sudden, you deleted that training. Oh. It will impact my data, right? It doesn't oh. matter why it is deleted, but if anyhow, I invested, let's say, three, four hours, that is a loss for me. I have a certification, that is a loss for me. So, we will see what are the repercussions, why we should not delete, but deactivate some. Okay, yeah, why I think. That, that, that'd be great. I think one of the sessions is, is I want to know what happens if I delete certain things like I delete an instructor or I delete an item or I delete a class. What is the impact? Yeah, thank you. Uh, course, that would, yeah, that, that'll that. be great. Yep. Correct. Because there are repercussions for all these deletions. So we will see why you should not delete something and why you should delete actually something. Okay. Yes, thank you. So this is how I will be sharing a lot of screenshots with you. So that mm -hmm. even if I'm not there, let's say, uh, once we complete it, and of course, there will be a huge amount of documents and you're lost somewhere when you're working on it. You just quickly go and open that sheet or screenshot data and you just follow the instruction and you'll see, okay, this is what, and you'll definitely recall everything. 